So welcome to the Compounding Center Connections, where we talk about different health conditions with our partnered practitioners. I'm your host, Jay Gill, the owner and a compounding pharmacist at the Compounding Center in Leesburg, Virginia, where we partner and collaborate with practitioners, create custom medications to help patients get better. The information discussed today is for informational purposes only not for diagnosis. In today's episode, I have Dr. Bill Lee and Dr. Megan Lee with us. We're going to talk about Hashimoto's thyroiditis and Graves' disease. To our listeners and viewers, I have known Bill for close to 20 years. I still remember the day when he came to our pharmacy and talked to us in the early 90s, actually, and talked to us about opening the Lee Clinic in Leesburg and he was strictly gonna focus on women's health. You took a tour of our pharmacy, and since then we've helped many women get better with your functional medicine approach. Then about four or five years ago, Megan, his daughter, graduated from the medical school and joined the practice. So, formal introductions for the viewers and listeners. Dr. William Lee founded the Lee Clinic in 1993. After graduating from Creighton Medical School, he served as a flight surgeon in the Air Force. After spending years in emergency medicine and family medicine, he realized by covering up symptoms with drugs, the real root cause of disease was not addressed. He attended one of the very first American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine conferences, and ever since then, slowly transformed his practice into what it is today. He addresses hormonal, hormonal imbalances, thyroid disorders, adrenal issues, vitamin deficiencies to get to the root cause. Dr. Megan Lee, his daughter, realized during res residency that her father was right. No one was getting better with antidepressants, birth control, and Ambien. She joined the practice in 2017 and is so grateful that she did. So let's get started. Um, Bill, what is Hashimoto's and how common is it? Well, <clears throat> Hashimoto's is where it's an autoimmune disease and that means where the body attacks an organ. So I think it's 84 autoimmune diseases. And Hashimoto's is where the thyroid function goes down. Now, in the literature, it says one or two percent, but I I see much more of it in my practice. Um, patients come in with a diagnosis of Hashimoto's, or we test patients for Hashimoto's every time when we see a new patient, and we test it by looking at the thyroid, and ultrasound. We do an ultrasound on all first patients, and that'll pick up uh, Hashimoto's. And we check for antibodies in the blood where it's attacking um, the thyroid. So I think it's more common than we thought. And I think that food allergies are going up, and that's where 80% of our immune system is. But we look closely at it. Now, occasionally I get a patient with Graves' disease, which is high thyroid. That's the other flip side of Hashimoto's. And so that's out of it. Now, it's more common in women. It, I think it's more common in women because they're more stressed than men are. And so that can affect it. And I get a lot of patients who are unsatisfied with, um, the conventional medicine look approach to Hashimoto's, they'll say, oh darn, you got Hashimoto's, that's pretty tough luck, um, there's not much to do. And that's unsatisfactory for the patients. They, they don't feel good about that. Yeah. And uh, so I'll uh, ask Megan, uh, Megan, can you add what causes Hashimoto's uh, thyroiditis or any autoimmune disease? So yeah, so as Dr. Lee said, or Bill, William, whatever, <laughs> differentiate between the two. So an autoimmune disease, you said there's 80 of them. 
for the most part, they they originate in the gut. So in order to have an autoimmune disease, you have to have three things. It's for the three stool principle of autoimmunity in the functional medicine world. You have to have the genes for it, a trigger, and then some component of increased intestinal permeability. So the genes can't change those. Well, not yet at least, but those are like a big player. And so you can have the genes for any autoimmune disease, any Hashimoto's. So Hashimoto's is the one that just happens to attack your thyroid, which is probably one of the more common auto, autoimmune diseases. But so, you know, you have the genes and just because you have the genes doesn't mean you have to have it. So the other parts, the trigger, and then some component of increased intestinal permeability are a big part. And so the trigger, whether that be pregnancy, menopause, um, puberty, like any hormonal fluctuations, a big stressor. So, you know, a divorce, a death, any time when like the cortisol goes up and down or residency when you don't sleep, um, you know, a lot of those things can be, you know, a trigger or it could be an infection, you know, in the gut, it could be Lyme, it could be blasto, it could be, you know, un you know unfixed mono. Um, and the other thing would be more of the toxin base. So metals, heavy metals, um, environmental toxins, those kind of things. That's kind of like the rarities, but you know, where you live in a very strange world, you can have impaired detoxification. Um, big nutrient deficiencies are, can also be a trigger and then food allergies. So those, that's like a, you know, basket of things, yeah. but then, you know, for the most part, all autoimmune conditions have some component of increased intestinal permeability. So that's something that we can really hone in on and at least start function, you know, start, you know, with the first the diagnosis of the antibodies and the thyroid function, but then, you know, seeing where the antibodies are and then starting with the gut and some new, we always check vitamins. Whenever we check the, the we check Hashimoto's and everybody, check thyroid and everybody, but check vitamins become some nutrient deficiencies can be a trigger to all of this. And so, you know, conventional farming and, you know, the soil crisis we live in, there's just not a lot of nutrients in a lot of people. So um, looking at the gut and, you know, those are the big reasons for Hashimoto's in today's modern world that we see. And so figuring that out is, is you know, a task, but um, the gut is a good place to start. Gotcha. And then, so, you know, uh, then the next uh, obvious question is, okay, for uh, a person watching this, what are some signs and symptoms could they look out for and talk to their, uh, their practitioner about? So, you know, the thi so the thyroid, the gland is this little gland here at the low at your neck and that it basically runs, it has every cell in your body has a receptor. It basically runs your metabolism, your heart rate, your immune system, keeps you warm, lets your hair grow, manages your hormones. So symptoms of low, which is the Hashimoto's, everything is slowed down. So fatigue, depression, constipation, hair loss, brittle nails, um, weight gain. Um, those are the big ones, like a lot of colds, joint pain, anemia, those can be the things. And so that's, the, I mean, that's a lot of things that people feel often. So those are the big things for Hashimoto's. It's kind of fill and flow. So uh, Bill, um, can you talk about how you diagnose uh, Hashimoto's at the clinic? Well, <clears throat> we do, I guess, uh, what I'll call kind of in-depth testing. Your regular doctor does the TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone. And that's the pituitary calling down. That is a 10 times range from 0 0.45 to 4.5. And that is a wide range. Now, sometimes they check T4, which is the gas tank. But we check T3, which is what I'll call the factory output. Your energy, it gets in the mitochondria. It helps everything. And then we also check zinc selenium and iodine and they help the conversion of t4 to t3 and you want those nutrients in balance <clears throat> to uh help your thyroid to work so then we also on all and then we do antibodies in the blood looking for um autoimmune and then we also do a thyroid ultrasound 
and it'll show the chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis, and that's where the thyroid is being attacked. So we do that in all um, first patients, and then we replace the nutrients as they need. The, almost everybody is low in iodine, and so we'll do iodine if low. Sometimes it'll be 50-50 on zinc or selenium. And the other clue I get, which I think is interesting, is if you talk to the patients about their family history, they'll say my mother has Hashimoto's or that there is um, rheumatoid arthritis and my sister has Sjogren's syndrome or another autoimmune disease. And there's a concept called in utero where, where you're <clears throat> in, in the uterus for nine months and you'll pick up your mother's autoimmune disease, her food allergies. And when you come out, you'll develop your own. And so the mom may have Hashimoto's or rheumatoid arthritis. You've got Hashimoto's and a sister has another autoimmune disease. And so uh, I think it's interesting to me how we can go through a family and they don't, I mean, nobody knows to connect the dots, but it's an interesting pattern. Very interesting. I did not know that. Um, Megan, anything you want to add to it? Um, no, yeah. I mean, the antibodies, or the, we did the free, the all that stuff, and then um, antibodies. And then some people, you can have totally seronegative Hashimoto. So your antibodies are negative, and then your ultrasound could be positive, but, you know, you can even miss it with that. And then so there are a group of people who you could have Hashimoto's and no antibodies, no ultrasound, and you know, the extreme thing is like a cytology where you actually like take a cell from the thyroid, but I can't, you can't biops every, biopsy every cell. So there's theoretically people who, you know, there's no diagnosis, you know, but you have those symptoms. Um, but I forgot to mention one thing with the Hashimoto's is you obviously it's low, but when there's destruction at the thyroid gland, you can have moments when it's high. So, you know, the thyroid, damage from the antibody attack and so you'll feel low and then all of a sudden you'll get palpitations or you'll get anxiety or you'll feel really up and it's a release of thyroid hormone and so that is something that seems really para you know paroxysmal you're like why am i feeling up when i should be feeling low but that's like a thyroid attack so it can flip from hashi to graves and so graves is the other spectrum of the autoimmune in the other direction got it so a thorough workup is done and uh, I mean, a thorough set of labs are done. Um, can we talk about uh, what are some treatment options uh, for somebody who's diagnosed with uh, Hashimoto's? Well, uh, what we do is <clears throat> when we get the test back and the key thing that we look at is look at the antibodies, see if there's antibodies against the thyroid. We look at the T3, that's the key thing for metabolism, hair, nails, uh, ectoderm type things, energy and easier weight, easier weight loss. And the range on T3 is like 2.3 up to 4.4. There's a lot of patients, it's down in the twos. They have no energy, they don't feel like doing anything. And they're probably right, they just feel miserable. They don't wanna do anything on the weekend. So we do armor thyroid uh, or compounded thyroid, which is T4 and T3. We start slow and then check them in about three weeks and then see how they're doing. Now, thyroid has to soak in. It takes a little while to soak into all the tissues. So we don't go too fast. If you go too fast, then <clears throat> the, the T3, floods the, uh, the system and you get palpitations. So we go slow, let it soak in. And then when we look at the, the blood test, we look at the selenium, the zinc, the iodine, and we always give tyrosine along with if they need um, iodine. And then <clears throat> in the ultrasound, sometimes we pick up a nodule, which is a precancerous uh, lesion. So we follow that about every six months if they have the nodule, uh, just to be sure. So then we, we check their thyroid in about three weeks. 
and then we see them in about a month and see how they're doing, what their energy level is like, and what their T3 has done. Okay. Megan, anything to add to that? Uh... No, yeah, the big thing that we do in the way we, we do it differently is we do a, co you know, a combination thyroid of the T4, T3, because Synthroid is the basic, you know, what regular doctors do and someone who's completely healthy, that's fine. But like the conversion of the T4 to the T3 can be blocked by a lot of things, stress, nutrient deficiencies, antibodies block that conversion. And so you have to give it in the same, so like the porcine thyroid or compounded thyroid is given in the same ratio that your thyroid produces hormones. So it's nothing crazy, but if your thyroid's low, you should replace it as it is. It used to be the standard of care before Big Pharma Synthroid came in. Um, so it, 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 they just do better. And it, T3 got a bad name when people were, you know, dosing and not checking levels. But we really check levels and we want to make sure you're towards the top of the T3, but we don't put you over that. And you just do a lot better. You feel really good. Okay. Now, I, I know we talked about, you know, um, treatment using medications, but I know you are big on also talking to your patients about some lifestyle changes. And uh, could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so, I mean, when it comes to Hashimoto's, it's, you know, we can replace the thyroid, we could, you know, get that, that's easy. -ish. I mean, you know, you have to be motivated to do that. But for some of the other stuff, it is, you know, you have to be ready for the cha change because a lot of people with Hashimoto's do have a gluten allergy, about 80 to 90 percent do oh. do better off gluten. And so I usually recommend, you know, reduction in gluten, dairy, and, you know, possibly soy if they're still not feeling well or antibodies are still high. And if that doesn't do the trick, which usually sometimes it doesn't always, we recommend food allergy testing, which we do the ALCAT test, which is a food allergy test. It's a blood test. It's not a not the IgG allergist test, it's a different type because your thyroid is part of the GI tract. So when you're pre when, not pre when you're in the uterus, it you know, comes from your GI tract. And so it's really sensitive to food allergies and it gets affected when you have those antibodies towards the food. So the ALCAD test is a good one. Um, so you know, if, the, if the dietary stuff doesn't work, but you really have to you know, manage stress uh, you know, clean up your environment and just, you know, move a little bit, increase sleep. A lot of times, you know, it's, you know, just running on no end and go, go, go and no relaxation. And if you don't sleep, you're just not going to heal. And so people kind of burn out and they get here. Um, and so those kind of things go a long way. Obviously getting the thyroid under control, you know, is a great first place to start, but it's not the end all be all. It's a, it's a whole process. And I, and I forgot to mention the other, you know, the other thing that we do when it comes to Hashimoto's is checking hormones and adrenals. And so those are both, you know, really important for balancing, you know, and affecting your stress levels, helping you sleep. And usually when the thyroid's out of balance, the rest of your hormones are out of, out of balance too. And so progesterone, uh, at adrenal at saliva test, we test um, the estrogen and progesterone, your DHEA, pregnenolone, all that stuff in your cortisol pattern because that's usually out of whack if your thyroid's been down for long enough. So some people, if you know, if you know, it's you immediately just find out you have Hashimoto's and we replace your thyroid and you know manage that, that's fine. But usually it's going for a long time or they've been on Synthroid for a long time and they're really burnt out and we have to build them back up and hormones are usually a part of that too. Okay, so uh, now you guys also touched upon some, you mentioned some supplements. Can you, um, Dr. Lee, uh, talk about some supplements that you, you know, make sure the patient always starts on also? Yeah, uh, I, I think it's interesting because <clears throat> when we test, I, I like to test instead of guessing. So some people will say, oh, I need zinc or, you know, it helped the conversion from T4 to T3. But we get the blood test back and then the patient's name is at the top of the page. So that's specific for them. And to kind of expand on what Megan mentioned, we do saliva testing. And one of the things that in the saliva test, besides the hormones, is DHEA, it's dihydroepiandrosterone. 
it's a master hormone, but it is more depleted in ladies because ladies tend to be hot reactors and worry more. And this is my theory on it, but if you worry more, you deplete <laughs> the DHEA and the DHEA is your protector against autoimmune diseases. It, it's the, the big deal. And so when they do tests at Yale and they <clears throat> take a lady and a man and they show them a saber tooth tiger or something like that, the lady will overreact and the man will say, well, get my gun, that type of thing. Yeah. And so it's, it's maternal instincts uh, and, and the ladies get played out more than the guys do. Um, the ladies will have different cortisol issues and DHEA issue, issues than obviously the hormones than guys do. I only get uh, the um, cortisol depletion or DHEA on guys back from Afghanistan and they've been a sniper for 24 hours and stuff like that. But uh, I'll get regular ladies coming in depleted. And I'd like to mention, you can call the office <clears throat> and we have a manual for patients and it explains those things, cortisol, the thyroid yeah. is confusing to patients and it's called organic medicine, but it helps to explain how this works and how Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease and on uh, the vitamins and different things like that. So uh, we tend to replace what is low, say zinc, selenium, iodine, thyroid, etc. And then we have to work on the food allergies. And if that doesn't work, we have a, an ALCAT test for food allergies. And then it's just good gut, um, uh, good bacterial flora, et cetera, and um, things that uh, affect the gut, uh, affects the leaky gut, which then, then affects the autoimmune disease. So it's complex and we're one big circle of um, Hashimoto's, food allergies, immune, et cetera. Yeah. Now, Dr. Lee, what was the name of that manual again that uh, uh, it's called viewers can organic call medicine. Right. Organic, you organic medicine, if you didn't hear him. Yeah. Okay, organic and, medicine. Got it. And you can get it um, on our website or call Jennifer and she'll send it out to you. But it helps to explain what we're doing. And it's confusing to patients. TSH plus T3 is a reverse uh, type of thing. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, a lot of information we've talked about this evening, uh, today, and um, I'm going to uh, try to do my best to summarize what uh, you talked about. And so, first of all, Hashimoto is an autoimmune disorder where the, the body just attacks the thyroid, the thyroid gland, a thorough lab workup should be done, not just the TSH. Um, thyroid replacement therapy is usually initiated. Um, diet and lifestyle changes have to be made. And there are supplements that you should take to optimize this thyroid replacement uh, therapy that a patient starts on. Um, for those that are attending the webinar and listening to our podcast, uh, we will be providing you with a link to download a checklist of lifestyle changes and supplements uh, that Dr. Lee and Megan Lee uh, usually recommend. And in closing, uh, how would someone or where would they reach um, either of you? So we have, well, right now we're doing telehealth, but we have offices in Leesburg, Winchester, and Fairfax. Um, our main office, like our main office is in Winchester where our front desk is and everything. Um, we have, uh, our phone number is 540-542-1700 and we're just at theleeclinic.com and then we have an Instagram that I try to be really up with and it's just the, at the Lee Clinic on Instagram. I try to just post recent uh, studies and for information, little tidbits and sometimes they answer questions on stories. Um, so yeah, it's just at the Lee Clinic and then the www.theleeclinic.com. 
And we'll put all this info at the bottom of the description um, of, the, of the webinar and the podcast. And I can be reached via email at j at compoundingcenter.com. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.